Hello everyone, I'm Sagar Sumit and I'm from India and I'm currently working as a computer science engineer in Bangalore. I originally come from Patna. I was born and raised in Patna. It is the capital city of Bihar. I stayed in the eastern part of India. You know the part that uh, comes most often in the studies, uh, the usual suspects, UP, Bihar, Odisha, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh. If you go through any development studies in uh, India focused on the socio-economic context of India, you will definitely come across these parts. So clearly, this area is not one of those with the best socio-economic indicators. But I'm proud that uh, things have improved since independence and uh, especially since the faster growth rates of uh, 90s and the last decade. Uh, but you know, uh, what puzzles me is that uh, this wasn't one of the best states either uh, at the dawn of independence. And there have been many pro-welfare policies, uh, many policies to fight poverty, many policies to uh, uh, increase welfare of people uh, in this region. So clearly, there is some missing link between public policy and public welfare. You know, even though policies are well-intentioned, uh, even though uh, they may be implemented properly, uh, de definitely there is some missing link between the two, right? So this is what motivates me to pursue this MicroMasters credentials in the ETP. Uh, the course uh, the course has a thoroughly enjoying experience, has given me a thoroughly enjoying experience so far. And uh, uh, one of the first things that I could relate in this course was that I have two elder sisters and we all are uh, we all are well educated. Uh, we all went to good schools. Um, and uh, uh, you know, but in one of the lectures, I remember Professor Duflo is talking about uh, how a girl child in the family benefits from a younger sibling who is a boy in a patriarchal society. This is in the context of a patriarchal society, right? So uh, uh, when she said this, the first thing that came to my mind was my family. So uh, even though uh, my elder sister, who are at least three years older to me, their education began almost the same time as mine. Uh, so my family didn't give much importance to education of girls uh, until I was born, right? When they started uh, with my education, they thought, okay, uh, it's not fair, we should educate uh, all our children. So this is the mindset in many developing societies. and. Uh, this is where we need to bring the change and the, ch the behavioral nudges are very hard to implement. We have to be right in our policy prescription. Simply knowing that there is a missing link between uh, public policy and public welfare isn't enough, right? Uh, we have to be able to evaluate those policies and come up with correct policy prescriptions. And this is where I feel the course fits in with my career goals. I want to, you know, when I when I think of uh, uh, how I have come up to this point in my life, uh, I worked so hard to get into one of the top engineering schools in the country. And uh, I think, okay, maybe I worked hard and I am talented, so I am where I am. But when you go deeper, when I think deeper about this, I realize there is a much bigger force than hard work and talent. And it is the privilege. I had the privilege of good schooling. I had good parents. I did not have to think about uh, the uh, think about uh, uh, how uh, will I survive the next day, right? So e even when first of all there are millions of kids who do not have opportunities to go to who don't get an opportunity to go to school, uh, and even when they do, they drop out because of financial problems in the family. So my broader career goal, my ultimate goal in life, is to extend the privilege that I had. To those who could not have had that privilege and to be able to do that at a mass scale uh, we should be able to come up with correct policies we should be able to aid the government our role as uh, well-educated engineers and uh, thinkers or economists or learners is to aid the government is to aid those people to uh, Im for, towards the implementation of right policies you know so that's that's why I was motivated to go for this course, and uh, I started with uh, microeconomics and global poverty course, 
and so far it has been a thoroughly enjoying experience. In the microeconomics uh, course, I especially love the way Professor Grover, uh, Grover explains uh, graphically uh, the impact of, uh, impact of policies such as minimum wage or uh, licensing regulations through simple uh, laws of supply and demand. Uh, it's, it's very, very uh, interesting and intuitive. At the same time, when we come to uh, when we dig deeper and come to the policy level, that's where the global poverty course comes in. So when the professor talks about uh, various RCT studies done in uh, many developing countries, and when the professor asks what could be the outcome, many often it uh, turns out to be counterintuitive, right? So that is very interesting uh, how people think, uh, how people, uh, how how policies actually. Uh, gets implemented on the ground. Um, I think by far this is one of the best online uh, material available if you want to learn about development economics. And uh, I'm very thankful to the MicroMasters course team for providing an opportunity to learn and also be able to apply these learnings in future. Thank you so much.